Good morning and welcome to an all new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Gigi Pagel. And I'm Kelly Kennedy. RJHSD is currently in the process of upgrading the district's transportation. We go to Jake Finn with more on the potential new buses. The district over the past few years has been looking at getting new buses. The district finally made the decision and purchased some. Uh, 12 on order. So we have four new EV buses expected to come in over the um, late spring, early summer, um, and then another eight more following that by mid-winter. Um, but will they be in operation is kind of questionable right now. The district has received $6.6 .6 million from Carl Mayer, CCAT, and the Clean Air Act funding in for the buses. Along with that, an additional $200,000 for infrastructure has been gifted. They are anticipating additional funding from CalStar Energize and Roseville City Electric. Our, act our transportation yard is under construction right now for EV charging stations. So we're doing the infrastructure uh, to potentially um, have half of our fleet in the next year and a half, uh, all EV um, buses. So um, we are gearing for, you know, a cleaner air for our students who we're not breathing any of that particulate matter, uh, cleaning the air for the heavy duty vehicles. Um, and we're really excited about that. I think um, it'll, it'll really benefit the community, uh, try to um, be proactive on uh, making this move um, within the community. The district hopes to have the buses running by summertime, hoping they will not run into any problems. They should be working um, over by summertime as well, as long as the, the parts are available. That's our biggest challenge with both the buses and the infrastructure right now. Senior Riker Davis hopes that these new buses will help make his ride to school a little bit more enjoyable. Make it better, to be honest, because those buses are pretty noisy sometimes. I always have to put earbuds in to drown out the noise. Thanks, Jake. March 1st is the payment deadline for spring AP tests at $98. If late to pay, there's a $40 fee. To sign up, meet up at Student Services with Mrs. Carson's or you may pay on our online store. Now we go to Joseph Bianchini with sports. Good morning. Welcome to this Tuesday's edition of EOTSN. I'm Joseph Bianchini. Over Ski Week, we saw two wrestlers advance to Masters. Both Nick Jimenez and Emma Meadows advanced to Masters where Meadows placed 5th and Jimenez placed 8th. After that, Meadows was able to move on to state and conclude her high school wrestling career before she hits college. Meadows is the first back-to-back -back state qualifier from RHS since back in 2011. It was fun. I went last year. Um, this year was definitely a lot more challenging. Uh, I don't know. It was, it was kind of weird. I didn't have any teammates with me this year, um, but I had such a good time. I didn't reach my goal, unfortunately, but um, I still gave it my all. And with that, winter sports are done. But there is no dead time in between sports as we are seeing spring sports starting up right away. On Saturday, baseball had scrimmages versus Whitney and West Park. And yesterday, boys lacrosse and boys golf both opened up their years. Let's hop into the game schedule to see what other game action we've got in store. Today, the softball team opened up their season versus Oakmont. Additionally, boys volleyball takes on Davis to open up their season, and girls lacrosse takes on St. Francis to do the same. Tomorrow, baseball has their first official game as they take on Oakmont. Boys volleyball are back at it versus Rockland, and girls lacrosse go to Bella Vista. We also see boys golf taking on Rockland at home. On Thursday, baseball takes on Pioneer High School. Softball go on the road to Granite Bay, and boys golf take on Rockland again, but this time on the road. And just in case you were wondering, on Wednesday, Swim was supposed to have a meet at Antelope, but that meet is canceled because Antelope's pool heater broke. Get it together, Antelope. And really quickly before we go, top players will be making their return here at some point over the next few weeks. The Google form has officially been updated to have spring sports, meaning any baseball, softball, volleyball, lacrosse, tennis, golf, or track and field top plays can be submitted to the form and included on broadcast. Access to those Google forms can be found in the bios of the EOT Sports Instagram and Twitter. And that's all in your home for Roseville High School sports, top plays, breakdowns, and more. I, the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Joseph. Last night, the world's greatest boxer, Jake Paul, finally was defeated by the hands of Tommy Fury. Influencer boxing or not, the fight was pretty entertaining to watch. Lasting eight rounds, Paul vs. Fury was pretty balanced all around. At the beginning of the fight, Fury came out really aggressive and brought the fight to Paul. The whole fight he had a lethal jab that kept connecting with Jake and prevented him from getting too comfortable. Eventually, the problem child delivered his dramatic moment, connecting a left hand to knock Fury down on his knees. I thought we had some really good rounds. Oh! Oh my 
Despite the knockdown, Fury would take the split decision by two cards of 76 to 73 in his decision. Tommy TNT Fury! In other entertainment news, this week's episode of the Tiger Cast will cover Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Tune in on Wednesday on Spotify or iTheTigerNews.com. And now, we go back to news. An RHS student has a passion for pageants. We go to Zoe Light with more on the story. An RHS student got an opportunity to participate in a competition that not all students get a chance to participate in. Junior Maddie Anderson decided to compete in the Miss Sacramento County competition. She began preparations for it in October, and the day of the pageant came up quick. Being a first-timer, she was feeling lots of emotions going into it. I was really nervous, I think especially because I've never done something like this before, so it was more of I was excited and nervous. The pageant officially began on the morning of February 11th. Anderson had many parts to prepare and perform in order to compete. So the competition began in the morning we had an interview at a city hall that we had to go in with the judges and we had about a seven minute interview and then later on in the day we had our competition show which consists of an onstage question, different dances, your talent. We left the whole thing and currently Anderson was and is very grateful for our opportunity to compete. I think it was a really cool experience. I've never heard of this organization, so getting to do this, I met a lot of amazing young women outside of this that are really passionate about what they do in their education, and it's really cool getting new opportunities like that. Not only did she leave with experience, she left with new relationships and the breaking of many pageant world stereotypes. The other girls were actually really sweet and encouraging. I think a lot of people in like the pageantry or like competition industry think they're really petty and just super all about themselves, but a lot of them were really sweet and encouraging and inspiring. Anderson highly recommends the experience to others and plans on continuing her pageant career in the future. I definitely would recommend it. I think it's a really cool experience and you get to meet a lot of new people and it's a great opportunity for others. Thanks, Zoe. That's it for today on Eye of the Tiger. And remember, we're always on eyeofthetigernews.com. See you next time.